Good morning, you guys. Here it is at long last, the popularly requested weight training video. A lot of you guys have been asking us, what do we do in the gym to train for the things we do out on the trail? So today, we're gonna show you the five main exercises that we do when we're in the gym to prepare ourselves for some of the difficult challenges we encounter out there in the mountains. Okay, you guys, so by far my number one weight room exercise for hiking and climbing is deadlifts. It is so extraordinarily helpful for carrying heavy loads, a big backpack, maybe even sometimes another hiker. So I like to use a hex bar because I feel like it's much more comfortable and it doesn't put my back in as vulnerable of a position as a straight regular bar does. The hex bar is a little bit heavier at 65 pounds instead of 45, so factor that in. And after a good warm up, we're gonna get heavy. So this is not like the deadlifts that you see those massive weightlifter guys doing where they're putting on like 500 pounds. I like to put on just about my body weight. This right here is 205 pounds. I weigh about 195, so it's just around my body weight. And I like to do 20 reps. Because remember, we're hiking. We're not going for a world record. So we want to get some endurance, but also that strength and power to be able to leap over things or carry really heavy things. So I just get in a nice position down here, butt nice and low. And you just start cranking out those reps. Okay, so while I prefer to do body weight for sets of about 20 reps, once in a while, if I'm really feeling it, I'll put on more weight. So this is 225 now, which is about 30 pounds more than my body weight. And just do a power set, maybe like eight to 10 reps, really just feeling the strength and power. This is for when you have to do big leaps. Oh my God, oh my God. Or carry another human. Oh, that felt awesome. <laughs> and you see, I didn't go to failure. There's no need for that, but whew, feels good, feels strong. Okay, so I also like to do this move, but let's be honest, I am not going to be carrying Adam up a huge mountain. So for me, it's all about just building strength and endurance. I tend to put about 115 pounds on the hex bar, do about 20 reps if I can. It's all about keeping good form Squeezing those glutes, trying to maintain stability and equal distribution of the weight across both sides of the body. Okay, so I'm sure some of you guys are thinking, bro, no way am I doing those exercises. That looks way too hard on my lower back. I completely understand. I've had back problems in the past myself. I find that the deadlifts actually help me strengthen my lower back. But for those of you who just don't want to do that, you can just do regular old squats. You can do air squats, just a lot of them. Or what I really, really like to do, I usually do this after deadlifts, but you could just replace deadlifts with it, is grab some dumbbells and you can do dumbbell squats. You can rest them on your shoulders like this, get nice and deep and power up. But I think the best is the combination squat and overhead press. I feel like this is a great exercise for backpackers. Because you're always having to lift up that heavy pack and put it on. These weights are a bit heavier than the pack, which is good. It'll make the pack feel light. Keep you from injuring yourself when you have to heave that pack up. The next day, after we go on a hard hike with a heavy pack, my shoulders and trap muscles are always so sore. So that's why I know doing moves like this is so helpful for me to just build that upper body strength. I know a lot of women tend to not focus as much on the upper body strength. I think it is super important. Now you may notice that I 
do not go all the way down to parallel. And that's just a personal preference for me because I try to avoid irritating my hip. So it's all about figuring out what's right for you to help you avoid injury. And I still get great benefits from even going this deep into the squat. So one thing I try to add into every single workout is a stability move. Now, some of you may know that Adam's nickname for me is Baby Deer, and there's a good reason for that. She's using what I like to call her Bambi technique. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a baby deer just learning to walk. I'm not sure what the technical term for the Bambi is. Oh, now she's gone to the crab walk. Oh, now bambiing again. I do tend to wobble and kind of bounce around, sometimes fall out on the trail, but you would be surprised how far I have come since I first started weightlifting in terms of my stability, and it's all because of moves like this. So when we're doing deadlifts, I will just simply incorporate something like a single leg deadlift. It's easy, straightforward, but it really helps you learn how to activate each individual muscle and keep your balance out on the trail. So I try to keep my back nice and straight with a little bend in my front knee, pulling from my glute and hamstring, really feeling that burn in the glute as I bring my leg back down. All right, so obviously the first upper body exercise that I always wanna do is some kind of pull-up thing. Now pull-ups you can do anywhere, but the thing to do in a gym is the one-arm hold. Because lots of times when we're out climbing, there's just one arm that gets the hold. Whether you're up climbing or down climbing, you have gotta be able to do stuff with one arm. So I just take this thing, mask the weight all the way out, and get one arm at a time. Nice and slow and controlled. all about being controlled when you're climbing. Don't jerk the weight up and down. Control it all the way up, control it all the way down. Think about lowering yourself with one arm. And then, you just switch arms. Okay, so I will try to incorporate a core move into every single workout that we do. And my current favorite move for hiking and climbing training is the hanging ab leg raises. So, I just find anything to hang on. The reason I like this so much is because it simultaneously activates your core, but it also really works your upper body strength and your grip strength, which are two crucial things when it comes to climbing. So I'll try to do maybe about 20 of these if I can, but by the end, my hands are practically falling off of this thing. So my version of Elise's V-ups is a little bit different. I really like to work on my grip strength because grip is so essential for climbing up difficult things. So I use this wide bar, which is really hard to grip. I do a half pull up, hold it, and then start to be. So the grip is actually the hardest thing on this. But it's gonna come in very handy when we're on those granite crags. You guys probably know by now that we love to end every single workout with a challenge. And Adam these days has been pretty proud of the fact that he can push up for a whole minute, which is pretty hard because it means you're going 30 seconds down, 30 seconds up. It's basically planking the whole time, but push upping at the same time. It's ridiculous. But as far as I know, he's never done a two minute push up. So. That is his challenge for today. I think this is going to be pretty entertaining to watch. I really wish at least would have given me this challenge at the beginning of the workout. <laughs> I'm already feeling kind of shaky. <laughs> I honestly don't know that a two minute push up is realistic, but it will be entertaining. You ready? I'm ready, are you ready? Yep. All right. Look at how slow and controlled you are right now. Jeez, I'm already shaking. I know. It's only been 30 seconds. Coming back up. Slowly, slowly. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. But oh, you got it. Ugh. Look at those arms shaking right now. Shh. Shh. 
Oh, oh and those legs, the whole body is shaking. 15 seconds, you got it, you got it, don't let go. No, no, Tw 10 seconds, 10 seconds. You're so close, you're so close. Five seconds, five seconds. Oh, I got it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> My first two minute pick up, you guys. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, after that brutal two minute push up, the only possible response is for me to make Elise do a one minute push up. I don't know if she can do this, I don't think she's ever tried it, but Elise is very strong and determined, so we'll see what happens. I think this is gonna be a total fail. Elise, you gotta go into it with positivity. I got this. You got this, come on. You got this. Are you ready? Um, I guess so. Okay, start. Keep it going down slow. You got about 10 more seconds down. Get all the way down to the bottom to your chest touches. Okay, now 30 seconds up, Elise. Slowly, slowly, slowly up. You can do it. Elise, you can do it. There's only 20 seconds left. Come on, Elise. You can do it. Elise, you got this. Elise, go. 15 more seconds, get up, get up. Come on, Elise. You got it. Go. Six more. Four. All the way up. Three, two, one. Yes. Why are you trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to me? <laughs> That's what you did to me. I'm twitching after that two minute push up. Literally, my muscles are just shaking. I know, my muscles are shaking for sure. We're a little bit beat, you guys, but that just gives you a pretty good sense of how we do these workouts to train for hiking and climbing. So just to recap what we did today, started with deadlifts, added in some squats with overhead presses, single leg deadlifts, pull downs, hanging ab raises, and we ended with a one minute or, if you're very fierce like Adam, two minute long push up. I think this is really gonna help you guys for hiking, climbing, and trail running. These exercises have been great for us. I hope they'll be useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Mm -hmm. Or comments can also be left in the comments. <laughs> yes, and we'll see you guys next time out on the trail. Hope you loved it. See you out on the trail. Climbing.